these 10 permanently banned channels, from smallest to largest explaining what they did, beginning with the most unlikable channel in YouTube history called It's Owen. I don't know who the fuck It's Owen is, but like, I feel like that's some fucked up shit. Like, why do y'all ban motherfuckers? Like, that shit really bogus as hell. Like, I ain't gonna cap to you. If it be some fugazi ass shit and some fake ass reasons to ban a motherfucker, I'm gonna crash out. You might recognize the channel from his notoriously terrible intros. Like this video and subscribe right now, or this spider will put on your ear whilst you're asleep tonight. Always placed after shameless clickbait like Charlie D'Amelio is dying today. I hate niggas like that, bro. Like, why the fuck is you clickbaiting, gang? Like, like, do better with your life, bro. If you can't get views not clickbaiting, bro, you don't need to be getting views. I ain't gonna capture you. You should be ashamed clickbaiting. I'd rather be on this bitch right now getting the views that I'm getting than out here lying to motherfuckers just to get views. Like, I can't do no shit like that, bro. On top of this, Owen relentlessly clickbaited fake Mr. Beast scenarios. However, after Technoblade's passing on the 30th of June 2022, it's Owen took his scumbaggery to a point of no return. He'd upload a video titled Mr. Beast Final Goodbye to Technoblade, with the introduction stating this. This is Mr. Beast's final goodbye to Technoblade and their last time playing Minecraft together. Although the video showed nothing more than Technoblade playing Minecraft and a completely fabricated Mr. Beast tweet. The video Video received over 800,000 views in under 24 hours. You see, and this shit is trending. This shit is trending right now, gang. Well, it was trending. And this why I'd be like, boom, why, how can you even feel good about yourself doing this shit, bro? Like, nigga, you are literally getting views just for niggas to talk about how much you are goofy. Like, niggas is not fucking with you, gang. Like, yeah, I don't understand what's your point of doing that shit, but... I mean, shit, if it's pay the bills, it pay the bills. Yet with a top comment reading, the amount of disrespect this guy has is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Complete and utter shame, he was about to face some serious backlash. Just awful garbage. I have more respect for shit stains in a gas station urinal than I do for Owen. YouTubers clickbaiting Technoblade's death for views has made me lose all faith in humanity. It's just so messed up, which is followed by another tweet from Owen himself. At Team YouTube, my YouTube channel with 3.5 million subs just got terminated please help me get it back i'm so depressed right now i don't know what to do you see nigga that's what i'm saying gang you don't deserve it you honestly just don't deserve the shit really because it's like man you, you you get the opportunity look it's one thing to finesse motherfuckers and then get your shit up right you feel me you you, you do it you get your shit up we'll up the bam but to continuously do that clickbaiting ass shit, and then you plan. The only reason why you getting views is because you saying niggas died and all that shit. So it's like, nigga, you don't, you all that monetization that you get off that shit, you don't deserve that shit, bro. You lying. You need to be gone. I ain't gonna cap to you. Those type of creators don't need to be in this industry. After YouTube then responded, Owen doubled down by stating, I never received any community guideline strikes, so I didn't know what I was doing was violating the guidelines. If I received just one strike, that would have been enough for me to realize what I did was wrong. Please give me another chance. I'm so depressed right now. It's my only income. Owen then made another two tweets displaying how desperately he wanted his account back, although Team YouTube concluded their thread by stating, Update, we've reviewed your account and confirmed that your channel was correctly suspended due to explicit content. Note that you will not be able to access or create any other YouTube accounts. Although while everybody was Damn. happy to witness Owen's ban, Steve will do its termination was a bit more controversial. I know about Steve. Steve ass be tweaking. Like certain motherfuckers be going to the stream and Steve is one of them extreme motherfuckers. Steve had always been on YouTube's radar for his unconventional style of content. Eating challenges, prank videos, and beginning in 2021 sponsored gambling uploads for which he was being paid more than a million dollars a month. It's therefore no surprise that Steve lent into this type of content, even picking up a sponsorship from Steak, until he made one simple error undoing everything that he'd worked for. YouTube has an extremely strange rule where you're allowed to say the name of any gambling website, but you can't show the URL of the website with 
the dot com included. Well, in June 2022, uh, Steve uploaded a gambling video like any other, although the URL had been left in as his editor forgot to blur it. Despite Steve having no strikes on any of his channels, YouTube made the choice to permanently delete all of them. I'm allowed to say I'm playing the website, but they would go to deleting my entire main channel because on my second channel, it wasn't fully blurred. After which Steve that's some bull complete bullshit like i ain't gonna cap to you man like i feel like you got to give a nigga a warning first because it's like niggas don't don't read them guidelines but at the end of the day they do be like oh you gotta read the guidelines this down the third but nigga what and then you should spend that multiple niggas account on all other platform on all the other you feel me a nigga make another page and you should spend his other pages and shit nigga y'all know what the fuck i'm trying to say I ain't gonna cap. This shit's stressing me out. Dave said this. They called me the day of deletion, and it was a girl. She seemed pretty stoked I was getting deleted. And huh. I was like, yeah, she seemed happy. Surprise. And it I was like, I was with me and my editor, and I'm like, we're like, bro, like, she's happy. As a result, the Nelk boys were warned about filming with him. They basically said, like, your channel's gonna be deleted if Steve's in your videos. Which might be harsher treatment than that given to Leafy. Damn. Between 2013 and 2016, Leafy built a reputation for uploading edgy content, which flowed well with YouTube zeitgeist at the time. However, between 2017 and 2020, Leafy went on hiatus before returning with a pretty controversial approach. He'd upload a video titled Content Nuke Pokimane, in which he'd offer pretty reasonable criticism. 80% of Pokimane's streams is just her watching videos, adding actually nothing to what she's watching whatsoever. However, he'd then go on to upload 12 different videos, clickbaiting Pokimane in the title and thumbnail, while talking about unrelated topics in the video itself, such as finance and investing. Of his life last 15 videos, 12 of them were on Pokimane. Having 12 videos all insulting Pokimane in the title and thumbnail, that's viewed as harassment by YouTube. Despite having no- Yeah, you can't- you can't just keep doing that shit, bro. Like, yeah, you can't be doing that shit, man. Can you react to some scary? Yeah, I could check that shit out after this. But yeah, you can't just be doing shit like that. YouTube will most definitely get on your ass for, like, harassing and bullying and shit like that no prior strikes on his channel, Leafy woke up to a permanent ban for creating content designed to harass, bully, or threaten. He take to Twitter stating, morning at Team YouTube, my channel was suspended yesterday. Curious if there's anything I could do to get it reinstated, or if there's any statement on this you could give on this. However, despite his tweet, Leafy seemed pretty unconcerned about having his channel deleted. If I am going to be banned, like, so be it. The website is shit. What else is there need? Like, there's nothing else needed to be said. Pokemon took to Twitter stating, I know I'm going to get asked this, so I'd like to clarify I had nothing to do with Leafy's ban, before adding don't want my silence to leave room for assumptions. Leafy's ban was bound to happen eventually. However, someone whose termination was a little more surprising was that of Kabi Lami. He gained 100 million TikTok followers in less than 5 months, and with YouTube launching their own shorts program, Kabi started posting across the two platforms. His notoriously funny skits exploded on YouTube as they had on TikTok, giving him over 800 million views and 2 million subscribers during his very first month on the Damn. platform. This was then followed by another 800 million views in the next month, and after only four months of uploading to YouTube, Kabi Lami had racked up 2.4 billion views and 5.2 million subscribers. He was there. And the only thing this nigga did, bro, that's why I'd be like, bro, how? The only thing this nigga do is be like this. And the nigga get millions of views. Like, what the fuck? You don't be Pokemon. Then banned permanently. Why? Well, you see, this wasn't actually Kabi Lami. It was an impersonator who was simply reposting his content to Damn. YouTube. He'd gained 2.4 billion views before YouTube ever realized, and this wasn't the only account doing it. Only five days beforehand, YouTube had banned another Kabi Lami impersonator with 4.84 million subscribers, after which YouTube found a third impersonator who'd gained over 100 million views in a matter of days before they were also banned. And they made and they made all this money. I was gonna say, what's the point of motherfucking impersonated niggas? But if you making all this money, shit, I see why you impersonated motherfuckers. I think I might have to, you feel me? Now they'll take your whole page away for that shit. But this shit is crazy. Yeah, you see this shit wild as hell. 
head. As a result, Kabi began uploading content to his own official channel, which remains very much active, unlike JStation. His termination began with a video titled My Girlfriend Alexia Died Rest in Paradise, in which he'd state the following. Last night, we lost Alexia to a drunk driver, guys. She was on the way to pick up something for our video we were making on our second channel, Dream Team. <laughs> Here, guys. As mentioned, JayStation's girlfriend had apparently died in a car crash, prompting him to upload another video visiting the spot where it supposedly happened. <laughs> Okay, man. However, only three days later, JayStation began using his girlfriend's death to gain extra engagement. As you guys know, my girlfriend Alexia just passed away in a tragic accident. That shit sound fake as hell, gang. This, this, this shit sound, sound fake as hell, bro. Like, what the fuck, nigga? You sound excited. Yo, my girlfriend just passed away in a motherfucking that. I would think you damn near did it if she actually died. I think you killed her on game because there ain't no way you and this bitch being this happy and shit. I ain't going to cap to you. This shit is wild. Prompting some ordinary gamers to investigate if she'd even died at all. Well, no this one has by that name on the system. Nobody by that name specifically has suffered any form of death, right? Well, no. As a result of the video, Alexia came forward confirming that she hadn't actually died. Jay faked my death. I felt sick to my stomach from the minute that he posted it. Before going on to add that the couple had since broken up. Like the times that he was mean to me, it's just like he was so mean. I ain't gonna cap to you. A nigga, a nigga that's motherfucking, uh, a nigga that's motherfucking trying to have you fake your death, I know he be doing some fucked up shit to her. Like, for anyone to even think that shit is okay is so crazy to me. Like, why would you want to do some shit like that? Even if you don't fuck with your ex, like, why would you want people to think that she died, bro? I mean, of course you getting, I mean, you getting views, but nigga, I don't understand why y'all niggas want to do certain shit to get views. And I just don't know why. Despite having posted years worth of unsavory content, it seemed faking his girlfriend's death was a step too far, as YouTube would permanently delete JayStation's channel on the 12th of March 2021. JayStation responded by stating, I didn't even do anything wrong, and I made videos all year getting no controversy. However, when these delusions failed to bring back his channel, he concluded, I'm going to sue them. Crazy. Anyways, I'm done. Nothing I can do now. Which is the same conclusion drawn by Seven Supergirls. The channel began in 2008 and featured seven girls for the seven days of the week that upload everything from skits to day in the lives, amassing over 5.6 billion views by 2018 Damn. when the channel took a pretty dark turn. The channel was owned by a 55-year-old named okay. Ian Wyland, no who on the 17th of August 2018 too. was accused of acting inappropriately with one of the seven Supergirls. Roughly seven months later, Ian pleaded guilty to the incident Folks says, look like he be doing that type of shit, gang. You see motherfuckers like him, bro. He 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 got he got the uh bald spot on, you know, with the bald, with the hair around it, with the glasses. Oh yeah, folks says most definitely did that shit, bro. Look at folks. He 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 know his horn by all ass be doing that shit because his ass can't get no grown women his age. So you know his ass gotta force young girls to do that shit. You can't force no woman to do that shit because a woman down there beat his ass on game and wasn't only sentenced to three months in prison but was also legally banned from working on youtube he was only sentenced to three months how the fuck this nigga how 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 did this nigga only get sentenced to three months for fucking with underage girls money talk that's all i can say only thing i can say is money could talk this nigga got three months for messing with underage girls, bro. Only three months. That shit crazy as hell. As a result, Seven Supergirls was terminated on the 12th of March 2019, at the time being the most subscribed channel ever to receive a permanent ban. That would be until nine months later, oh, when YouTube's what? scummiest copycat yeah, was banned for saying, stealing folks, content. Well. The Indonesian channel named Kalon Sojana had gained over 13 million subscribers by employing a highly unethical strategy that essentially find already successful videos spoken in English before copying the thumbnail in its entirety, adding their own watermark, 
Park and uploading it to Indonesian YouTube, where the original creator had no way of finding it. However, all of this changed in November 2019. That shit low-key smart as hell. That shit smart as hell to do low-key, like translating that shit, bro. Someone definitely got, I ain't gonna cap, they got that money on. When British YouTuber JT posted his own upload titled, YouTuber with 12 million subs steals my video. This channel had the audacity to steal my thumbnail, put an emoji on it, and then put their watermark on it. They put their watermark on my thumbnail and claimed it as theirs. This YouTuber has stolen my thumbnail, stolen all the information from my video. They literally watched my video and took everything. They took the screenshots, they gave me no credit for my own DMs. This guy has literally just ripped me off completely, okay? JT then highlights another crazy fact. This guy is the biggest YouTuber in Indonesia and he's stealing my stuff. He steals from people so much, okay, that he's got in his description, for copyright matters please contact us at this email. He did this because he knows he's stealing content. Leading the Indonesian media to talk about Callan's unethical practices. How did that nigga get away with that shit? Because I thought YouTube as a whole, everything was connected, you feel me? Like, it don't matter where you at, you feel me? If you're on YouTube, you're on YouTube type shit. But I guess it's, I guess that's not the case, man. You learn something new, you learn something new. A YouTube account from an Indonesian with more than 12 million subscribers has been accused of stealing other people's content, with the article attaching a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the videos they'd stolen. Having been exposed by his own country, Callan wrote an apology on Twitter translating to, We from the entire extended family of Callan Sarjana apologize to the YouTube channel JT for using ideas, thumbnails, and video prototyping without permission before posting a second tweet reading, Thank you for all your corrections. Hopefully the things that have happened will truly become a lesson for us to not make any mistake in the future. However, it was already too late. JT and two other YouTubers who had their videos stolen chose to simultaneously copyright strike Kalan Sarjana, terminating the channel on the grounds of multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement regarding material the user posted. He was a fraud. He deserved it. You steal content, you pay the price. That's just how it is. Although Indonesia wasn't the only country to lose their most subscribed channel, as Turkey's biggest was also banned at around the same time. The channel began with two kids and their father Muhammad focusing on children's content before they'd find themselves involved in Elsagate. Elsagate was the nickname for a 2016 genre of content where YouTubers took kid-friendly characters like Spider-Man and Elsa and mixed them with very unsavory themes. Inappropriate videos have infiltrated YouTube kids, often showing popular children's characters in violent and even sexual scenarios. The motive behind the videos was pretty damn obvious. Here's one from one month ago. 117 million views. Although with so many people watching, parents began to talk about it. There is a terrifying new trend in middle schoolers that I need to I ain't gonna cap to you, gang. That shit right there. That shit right there, man. It's kind of crazy, though. Like, I don't know what type of shit they be talking about, but if they talk about some sexual ass, weird ass shit, and you promoting your shit to kids, bro, that shit is wild, gang. Like, you, like, that shit, that, that shit is wild as hell, bro. Like, you feel me? I'm not, I'm not doing no shit that, that go against YouTube guidelines, bro. This right here ain't nothing. And I react to videos that's already on YouTube. But doing that shit is crazy. Tell you about. Prompting advertisers to pull their ads from the site. Right. We are shocked and appalled to see that our adverts have appeared alongside such exploitative and inappropriate content, said a Mars spokesperson in a statement. We've taken the decision to immediately suspend all our online advertising on YouTube and Google globally, therefore forcing YouTube to take a stance against these sketchy videos. Right. Only four days after Mars and Adidas pulled their ads, YouTube removed over 150,000 Elsagate videos, turned off comments on more than 625,000 videos and terminated more than 270 accounts, one of which being Turkey's biggest channel with over 15 million subs. Although no termination is stranger than that of Manoj Paraha. The channel was included amongst hundreds of banned multi-million subscriber Indian Shorts channels who all employed the exact same strategy. They'd find Western videos that had been successful in England. One thing about them Indian motherfuckers, bro, they will finesse the fuck out of something. Like, they they gonna finesse anything they can like indian motherfuckers is the most finessing motherfuckers ever like these niggas if they're not doing scam calls they doing some weird ass shit on youtube trying to scheme like these niggas always trying to finesse some shit 
English, cut them down into shorts and provide a Hindi voiceover, essentially re-uploading other people's content, with their language being the only difference. In an article discussing these channels, one owner stated, I would pick any video and do a voiceover. I realized that if we do voiceovers in a short story, then we're bound to get views, so I just stuck to that. Although this wasn't the end of the article. Over the past few months, he claims eight such fact channels have been banned. The rate at which YouTube grew their channels, it's also taking them away at the same rate. Many of these fact channels add voiceovers to content belonging to other creators, and that it's important for creators to only upload videos that they have made or are authorized to use. The biggest of these channels, Manoj Paraha, was able to gain 20 million subscribers in just over a year before YouTube also smashed it with the ban hammer. However, yeah. even then, Super Jojo Nursery Rhymes was banned with even more. Super Jojo caught copying Coco Melon. This Reddit post referenced a cartoon brew article reading, Super Jojo shamelessly free rides on Coco Melon's success by closely copying and exploiting every possible element of the Coco Melon channel, sometimes even frame by frame, which was displayed in the previously mentioned Reddit post, where user Billy Disney showed just how badly the copying really was. Damn. As a result, in August 2021, Coco Melon launched a lawsuit against Super Jojo, claiming that the defendant has built its Super Jojo YouTube business by blatantly copying Coco Melon. One month after this, a new article was published reading, YouTube terminates Coco Melon rival Super Jojo channel with 22 million subscribers, citing that they had received multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement. Super Jojo's ban lasted for two months before the channel was then restored. However, this wasn't the end of the story. The channel's growth took a nosedive following their return to YouTube, and in July 2023, a jury has decided that Baby Bus committed copyright infringement with its animated series Super Jojo, and as a result, they were ordered to pay Coco Melon 23.5 million. You see, niggas, y'all did all that shit, bro. Y'all spending all y'all time and energy to, to do some fake ass finessing ass shit. Just for that shit to backfire and you lose everything. That's why just just do it the right way, man. Just do it the right way. And then you don't got to deal with bullshit like this. In that very same month, Super Jojo wiped their channel clean, deleting everything down to their profile picture. So while the channel is still technically active, Super Jojo could easily be considered the largest YouTube channel. Damn, they over with. You see, certain motherfuckers like them, bro, they don't got no real talent, no real skill. No, nothing, bro. They can't even sit down and react to shit. Like, reacting is considered fair use if you could yap like me. As long as you could yap, you 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 could do fair use. These niggas can't even do that shit. These niggas want to steal nigga shit bar for bar, word for word. And y'all really taking y'all hard-earned time and energy to steal some shit, nigga. Like, damn, bro. What the fuck is y'all problem, bro? Y'all got to do better with this shit, man. Now you back doing bullshit, bro. But if you... Don't fuck with this video. I know your ass gonna fuck with another motherfucking video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on any content like this. Go!